project four is called tic-tac-toe and what we're going to be doing in tic-tac-toe is we're going to be um, learning how to do any number of things uh, including working with arrays um, building a new kind of uh, loop and I think you're basically going to like it project four we're creating a console project from scratch um, we're using a, a new variable called char and another one called string. We're going to store variables in an array. We're going to see what that means. We're going to look at local and global variables. And we're going to call functions, declaring and writing them. And we're going to use switch case statements and um, do a do while loop. Let's see what that plus plus operator is all about. Okay, most of you know how to play tic-tac-toe. Generally, two people play. Um, you have nine squares, and you try and fit three in a row. Like this person put three X's in a row, and his opponent didn't get the third um, O in a row. But whoever gets their uh, particular character in a row wins. Okay, this is a flow chart for, for um, tic-tac-toe. Basically, uh, the first thing we do is we build the playing board and then we move into um, creating these various loops about who wins and then we actually end up doing the playing thing. It's, it's a lot of fun, but this shows you the whole picture. So you can go back here to the beginning every once in a while, see where the piece of the puzzle is that um, you're working on. And you're going to be building flow chart soon. Um, it basically helps you with planning your, your program building. In lab one we basically build the program from scratch. We store many variables in um, only one, many characters, only one variable. So now we're going to put build the board that makes our tic-tac-toe program. So to create a new console product project what we do is we point to new, file, new, then project. In the new project dialog box under product types click Win32. Under visual Pro uh, studio install templates uh, click Win32 console application. So you click here and here. In the, in the name uh, field change to tic-tac-toe. and click the browse button. In the project uh, location dialog box uh, go find your folder. I come over here to my desktop. I gotta go to live. Come into resources. So this is where I want it to go. So all I do is click select folder and now um, I've got a folder for my C++ project. So in this dialog box here, I just click OK. Now I click Next. I click uh, Empty Project. And I click Finish. Now I'm going to add a new CPP file. So what I'm going to do is right click my source file. I click add. Then I click new item. And I'm going to, in the name field, I'm going to change this to tic-tac-toe. Okay, in the location field, I go. I already have a folder called Tic Tac Toe, so I don't need to make a new one. I'm just going to erase that extra folder here. Go delete. Now I just click the Add button here, and now I have a Tic Tac fo Toe folder. So now we're ready to start. All I have to do is put in here Tic Tac Toe by me. down a couple 
and put in here um, include the libraries. Then the library, of course, we have first is IOStream. Pound include. Then a um, couple lines under that, I'm going to put in, um, use a standard namespace. So that I put under here using namespace std just like we've done before a couple lines after that I put in my void main and we've done all this before right there's nothing new here of course I have my curly brackets my ending curly brackets Now I'm going to do my first new thing here. I'm going to declare a variable called char, C-H-A-R. C-H-A-R can only stand, store one character of information. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A through Z, but only one. It can't even be a negative number, okay? It can only be one letter. So that makes it very skinny and very usable for things that you um, want to use that are only one character big. So now I'm going to write in here, declare local variables. And I'm going to type char board, character board, the semicolon. So that tells me I'm declaring a local variable. And we're going to learn more about local variables a little later. Right now, what we're going to do is we're introduced using brackets because we're going to have uh, some something called um, something called an array. And now brackets use uh, indicate something completely different than a curly brace. So don't use the right kind of don't use the wrong kind of bracket because it will confuse your program really bad. A, an array is just a particular kind of variable. I mean, a different type of um, bucket okay remember our bucket you contains single things like a like one like seven um, an array can store many variables in one variable so it's a container like an eggshell carton an egg carton that has many compartments so if you think of it that way you're not going to get confused too bad all the variables you learned about so far can be turned into arrays variables that become arrays have always more than one spot to store information in uh, so you're going to use an array whenever you want to store many variables, uh, many valuable va variables in the same value, many bleh, variables in the same value. So here's an example of what an array looks like. You have one variable here called board, and that tells you it has nine openings. So here you have the nine slots, zero through eight, okay, and they all contain a value. So that's what array looks like. So this is what array declaration looks like. We have our, our variable. We have a variable name and how big it is. See that? Now all I have to do to make this a, into an array is to put brackets like this around it and put in how many spaces it's going to be. It's going to be nine. Okay, so what are, you, what are we looking at here? We're looking at this array. Okay, we have nine block, we have nine containers here that we're going to put information in here. Okay, and these are represented by these variables right here. So you see it numbers. So this would be this corresponds with this one, this space. This corresponds with this space, and this corresponds with this space. So they're just numbered in a usual way. And that's what it looks like. This is the representation, and this is what it, what it looks like. So what happens? Um, when the user puts his, his X or O into the space, then that variable takes on that particular um, character. So it's going to look like this in the display. 
quotation mark, a uh, single quotation mark around the X where that's going to go. And this is the way it looks when the array stores it. It's almost like this. But see, this one tells you that it goes in space number two or space name two. Don't be confused. The first uh, space is always named zero. So now what I'm going to do so I'm going to put, put my explanation here. I'm going to put um, assign values to the playing board. I'm just going to type in here board. Then you have your value 0 is equal to 0. You click enter. And you, what you're going to do is you're going to copy and paste this. You, you right click copy. You come down and you enter your second one. That's for two, three, four, whoops, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then you just replace over here. That zero becomes one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you see this nine variables. The first one zero. So we're going to replace these. We're going to replace these numbers uh, with just re just replacement numbers for now. It's just going to hold the place for when we code later. We have to when we run our debugger. It also lets us know where we are in the code. Now I'm ready to make check and make sure that my code looks like the example. Um, you don't use the debugger yet because you don't have anything to debug, right? So make sure you use single quotation marks for assigning values to an array. Make sure there's a single quotation marks there. And make sure you have nine values, zero to eight, right? And you should have, um, make sure the numbers match so this should be zero, zero, that should be eight, eight, right? Usually after you check your work, you run your program, but you don't do that. You do that at the end of lab two. And that's the end of lab one.